بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ہیئر آئی ایم یور ٹیچر جنید ونس اگین ٹو این لائٹن یو وتھ سم نالج اباؤٹ دا ورلڈ ٹو کمنس بفور وی کمنس دا کلاس لیٹس میک سم دعا ٹو دی آل مائٹی اللہ رب زدنی علما رب زدنی علما اللہ ارنی حقیقت اشیا کما ہی او مائی لارڈ انکریز مائی نالج اینڈ شو می دا ریالٹی آف دا تھنگس ایز دے آر آمین یا رب العالمین اینڈ لیٹ می کوٹ اے ورس فرام دی ریسائٹ اے ورس فرام دی ہولی قرآن وچ گوز ایز ان ارزن الامانت علی السماوات والارض والجبال فعبین ان یحملها وَأَشْفَقْنَ مِنْهَا وَحَمَلَهِنْ الْإِنسَانُهُ كَانَ ظُلُومَا جَهُولًا When we propose the amanat of free thinking, rationality, imagination, creativity, etc. to the, to the skies and to the mountains and to the earth, they all shuddered in fear. But man alone came forward and wanted to bear that amanat. But for now, man has proved to be unjust to his cause. Today, the lecture will be one of the, one of the seven lectures that I'll be delivering on the first chapter of the textbook, Political Theory, textbook for class 11th. And if we turn to the page first, we can see there's a conversation going on between different three cartoon characters, Unni, Munni and their teacher. Unni starts the conversation with another book to memorize, to which Munni also says, if only we could talk about things that concern us. And in reply to their uh, query, their teacher says, wait and see, this class will be different. Let us turn to page 8 and read the books on Socrates. To which Unni says, I don't know, but I like the way he reveals the inconsistencies in the views expressed by others. And the conversation ends with Munni saying, this is really different. Who is Socrates? Now about the box in question, we'll be uh, dealing with that in a separate lecture. But for now, I would uh, just say that it is, one, it is an extract from the uh, masterpiece of the Greek philosopher Plato, the Republic. N now let us turn to page 2 and we can see there is an introductory part and then there, uh, then uh, the other titles of the chapter are what is politicus, what do we study in political theory, putting political theory to practice and why should we study political theory. And today's lecture will be about the introduction, the brief introduction that is presented before we go into the main topics like what is politics. And I tried to see what themes are touched in this, uh, in, in the two paragraphs. And I found out that the first six lines are all about what makes us human. The seven to thirteen line are about questions of political science, 13 to 16 about political thought, 16 to 19 about political theory and practice, 19 to 22 about praxis of theory and action, 22 and to 24 about produce politically aware citizens. And in today's lecture, we will just be dwelling on the introductory part. So coming to the first six lines, uh, the text reads as, human beings are unique in two respects. They possess reason and the ability to reflect on their actions. So according to the author, humans possess reason and the ability to reflect on their actions on their actions Third, they also have the capacity to use language 
language and communicate with each other communicate with each other each other and then the author again says that unlike other species they can express their innermost thoughts and desires innermost thoughts and desires so these are some of the characteristics that the author thinks makes us human but as the famous uh, dutch danish uh, thinker says what labels me negates me labels me negates me soren kierkegaard so what the um, uh, famous danish uh, thinker existential thinker wants to convey is that when we try to put a label on certain thing we think that the world has fully grasped that thing but the truth is that the reality of the things always escape us and so is with the question of what makes us human we can see that we we humans also have the capacity of imagination which the author didn't mention here and there are many other characteristics which the author uh, didn't bring into light so in in this way we can say that what labels me negates me and the question of what makes us human is very important for the reason that since as political theorists we are supposed to construct a beautiful society the question of what makes us human is of pivotal importance to illustrate this let us see let us take this glass of water we know water has a particular nature and if uh, this glass of water was to fall down both the glass will break as well as the water will be spilled spilled so similar is a case with humans so so symbolically if we take the humans uh, the water as the humans and the glass of uh, glass as the institutions which govern the humans uh, we as political theorists have to first uh, understand what makes us human and then devise the institutions by which those uh, humans can live a good life and aristotle in his book famous book politics in the first book says the following but obviously man is a political animal in a sense in which a bee is not or any other gregarious animal nature as we say does nothing without some purpose and she has endowed man alone among the animals with the power of speech speech is something different from voice which is expressed by other animals also and used by them used by them to express pain or pleasure for their nature does indeed enable them not only to feel pleasure and pain but to communicate these feelings to each other speech on the other hand serves to indicate what is useful and what is harmful and so also what is just and what is just unjust for the real difference between man and other animals is that humans alone have the perception of good and evil just and unjust etc it is the sharing of a common view in these matters that makes us uh, makes a household and a state so for aristotle too what what characteristic that differentiates us from other species is we are a language bearing creature as a so as a political theorist we should reflect upon what is language 
and when we'll be reflecting upon what is language we won't not only be thinking about what makes us human but we will be thinking something more interesting than that and what is that i'm going to just tell you we humans think in language and when we will be dwelling upon this question of language we will be dwelling upon philosophy of mind and when we will be dwelling uh, reflecting upon this question we will be developing we will be are reflecting upon what is intelligence and when we will be dwelling upon what is intelligence we as political theorists will be uh, developing ideas which will pave the way for artificial intelligence or robotics and a living example of this is the famous uh, political theorist noam chomsky who is considered as the father of linguistics modern linguistics and who whose research not only is on language but on all of the uh, related fields which uh language which the philosophy of language uh, deals with so as a political theorist one must feel proud enough that we are someone whose uh, ideas have the capacity to change the world and to develop the scientific temperament in the society then moving forward there are the uh, lines which deal with the questions of political science and some of the questions that the author raise here are how should society be organized why do we need government what is the best form of government does law limit our freedom what does the law state state owe its citizens what do we owe each other as citizens so the questions about uh the questions about uh, political science can be innumerable just like a scientist who uh thinks about why did this moon come from how is it that the moon remains suspended in the air without any support in the same way when the desire of a human being is to understand society we can raise the questions like what is state why did this state come from what is government why do we need a state and the questions can become innumerable and by reflecting upon these questions we will then be able to create institutions and what are institutions institutions are simply rules laws norms which govern the human nature resulting in incentives structures of power as it were to understand this definition of what institutions are let us take the example you are standing in queue uh, of uh, to buy 
lavasa in uh, in uh, in the kandu uh, dukan we know that the f uh, the rule there is that who comes first will get the lavasa first suffers and then if a uh, woman comes we men prefer to give her first than us so on the rule is woman can be given priority over men and likewise uh, we can uh, a person might give uh, to some elderly person first so we can see that uh, to procure the lavasa it will lead to conflict the conflict about who gets what who gets the lavasa first and in to resolve that conflict there are rules which govern our human behavior and then there are laws for example the uh, kandur cannot raise the price of the lavasa to a particular ceiling price which the government has set and there are norms the norms is like that uh, we take uh, uh, the lifaf with us to the uh, 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 to the kandur dukan so that uh, uh, both we uh, save using we save uh, we save us ourselves from using plastics which can cause environmental degradation so then coming to the other lines the other line talks about political thought just like uh, uh, right now i quoted aristotle to understand the society or what his views were about uh, human nature we have to refer to the great tradition of western eastern tradition of kotelia plato marx rousseau to build our own ideas by which we can make a difference to how the world is governed by and then there is the 16 to 20, 19 line about political theory in practice and i was able to demonstrate you with the example how the rules and the laws and the norms are in practice and determine who gets what when and how and then there is the praxis of theory and action now suppose uh there is a there is a student who uh, who is preparing for the exam then we might be able to change the rules of the institutions at work for example in the lavasa case uh, some student might come and make the statement that he has an exam and he needs to uh, you know uh, uh, be on time so the people there might give him the chance first so there we saw there is a change in the rules of the institution and and then finally there is about the lines are about produce politically aware citizens politically aware citizens aware citizens to understand this uh, let us take the example of donkeys suppose one day donkeys went uh went in the search of a leader so one of the donkey said that we would uh, choose the electoral method to choose our leaders so the donkeys uh donkeys set up an election campaign election pro election system to choose their leader so the question becomes what will the donkey choose and we know donkeys will choose 
donkeys will choose choose only a donkey to rule over them rule over them what the story says is that in order for us to produce good leaders we must as a society dwell and think critically about the different political questions and think about how a good society can be formed because when there are politically aware citizens they will choose the right citizens the right leader to uh, to lead them forward but if they choose to remain like donkeys then they will only be choosing donkeys to rule over them wa akhiru da'wana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin